Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, it's good to see you on here. Please comment in the comment section. We're just getting warmed up here, letting everybody connect. And um, so good to see you this morning online. And uh, as you can see, we have a, an announcement there scrolling across the bottom. But uh, just type in hello or good morning or see Chris is on there, Debbie's on there. And um, if you have a prayer request this morning, um, just type in the uh, praying hands emoji or just say prayer and we've got people that will engage with you, pray with you, pray for you. So um, just type that into the comment section. And so uh, just to get a, an announcement out here, as you can see scrolling across the bottom there, we are going to open next Sunday, May the 10th for Mother's Day. Woohoo! And so um, there's some information there along the bottom. If uh, you did not receive a text this morning, then um, text uh, REVO2020 to 573-284-8191 to sign up to receive uh, some information and details this week. We'll get some more details to you this week, but uh, we wanted to uh, just let you know that we will be opening the church back up for May 10th, on May 10th, on Mother's Day. So after eight weeks of quarantining, uh, we are coming back. And uh, we just wanted to give an opportunity. Um, you know, the, the reopening doesn't require you to uh, re-engage, but it gives you an opportunity to re-engage. So um, if you don't feel safe, if you don't feel like you wanna come out and uh, engage with the public yet, that is quite all right. You can still connect with us online and um, we'd love to see you online there too. And then just join with us uh, when you feel safe or you feel it's uh, good for you and your family. So uh, we're gonna begin worship here in about a mi another minute, uh, give a chance for people to um, click on here. And um, so I'll see you here in about 30, 35 minutes after the worship team comes on and leads us into worship. I would encourage you right there in your homes to uh, just really engage, really invite the presence of God to, to come into your home. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Good morning. I'm going to read from Psalm 86. This is the Passion Translation, and I'm going to start in verse 8. God, there's just no one like you. There is no other God as famous as you. You outshine all the others, and your miracles make it easy to know you. Lord Almighty, you are the one who created all the nations. Look at them. They're all on their way. Yes, the day will come when they all will worship you and put your glory on display. You are the one and only God. What miracles, what wonders, what greatness belongs to you? Teach me more about you, how you work and how you move, so that I can walk onward in your truth. 
until everything within me brings honor to your name. With all my heart and passion, I will thank you, my God. I will give glory to your name always and forever. You love me so much, and you placed your greatness upon me. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we just, we just declare you are good and you are great, and we want your glory to cover the whole earth, Lord God. And we thank you that even in the midst of the times that we're walking through right now, you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and your greatness is extending from one end of the earth to the other. And we just say we worship you. We join with the hosts of heaven this morning, and we say, holy, holy, you are holy, and you are good. And we just thank you, God. Amen. Amen.
Goodness. 
just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. You are so good to me. And I just want to thank you. I just want to I just wanna thank you. I just wanna. 
morning everyone I'm gonna go ahead and receive this morning's offering I'm gonna look in Isaiah 61 Isaiah 61 if you have your Bibles you can turn to that I'm not gonna read all seven verses here but I wanted to give that reference I'm gonna look pick up here in verse 4 now the first few verses there are where Jesus in Luke 4 said he turned to the uh, book of Isaiah and he found in the scriptures where it was written, and he began to read from the first verse there, and you'll recognize that. And it says, or the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me. And so uh, that's the reference here. But here's the rest of the scriptures that's not listed in Luke. And I think it's, it's what we're stepping into, not only as a church, but as a state, as a nation, that... We're stepping into these things. We're beginning to see this um, come to pass, and it's already started to come to pass, but we're going to see this more and more in verse 4. And it says, And they shall rebuild the old ruins, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. That's powerful right there. Double honor. For any areas of your life where people have tried to shame you or held you in secret contempt, that you shall have double the honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion, 
and therefore in their land they shall possess double, and everlasting joy shall be theirs. I'm telling you, the Lord is going to give you double for your trouble. We've all seen trouble these last six or seven weeks. We've seen trouble in our nation. We've seen trouble in our state and county, even in our city. And so I believe that we're going to start seeing the Lord's hand return unto us double for everything that we've lost, everything that has been reduced, everything that has been stolen from us, time that has been stolen from us, profits that have been stolen from our businesses. And he is going to give us double for all the trouble that the devil has ensued in this country. I believe as a church, we're rising up. We're in pow- we are an empowered people. We are not victims. We're not victims of this virus. We're not victims of this uh, the economy that has slowed down and halted. We are not victims. We are empowered to rise up and prosper and see the Lord's hand give us double for our trouble. So let's pray. I want to pray and speak some things over your offerings and your finances and your mindset in these times. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release the double for everything that's been lost, everything that's been reduced, everything that's been halted. I ask right now that you would give us double according to your word, double for everything that the devil has tried to shame us with, all the honor that the devil has stolen from us, all the things that he has stolen from us. Father, I release the double into every person's life that that sees this, every person that is struggling financially, those that may have been unemployed. We pray that employment would return, that they would either be restored their positions or have a better job opened up unto them. Father, those that um, have lost their jobs, we ask that you would surround them, provide for them, bring the necessary provisions, exceed their expectations. In Jesus' name, amen. And here's some information on how to mail in or how to give online. Thank you. If you would like to donate to Revolution Church, you can go online to revolutioncolumbia.com slash giving. Or if you prefer to mail in your donation, you can send it to Revolution Church, 203 East Leslie Lane, Columbia, Missouri, 65202. All right. So we are back. Hey, if you will, turn with me to Numbers 13. Numbers 13. And I'm going to read from 27 to 33. Numbers Numbers 13 and verses 27 through 33. It says, Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Now in context, this is where Moses sent men into the promised land, to the land of Canaan, to spy out the land, to see what was over there, see if there was any enemies over there, to see what uh, was available over there, where they were heading to. And they, he commissioned them to bring back a report, okay? And so this is the report that they're giving, and uh, there was a couple of different reports that came back. And so I want us to look today at um, some of these things. So let's pick back up in verse 28. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Verse 30, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. 
And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land to which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. Now look at this last phrase. And so we were in their sight. And so I'm going to I'm going to look at some things here and hopefully uh speak to you about selective sight. Because these spies, these men that they sent in there as spies to spy out the land, they came back with the wrong conclusion. Now they gave a accurate report. They said everything that was over there uh, that were facts, but they came to the wrong conclusion. Only Caleb came back and said, let us go up at once and take possession of the land, for we are well able to overcome it. Now, he saw the same thing, he saw the same facts, and yet had a different conclusion. The others came back and said, no, 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 wait. We saw giants in the land, and they devour the people. And we were like grasshoppers in their sight, and so we were in their sight. And so uh, they came to the conclusion that they were small, they were uh, insignificant, they were disempowered, they were victims. Uh, they were not able to go up into this land. And so I'm going to speak to you this morning how um, your success, your breakthroughs, are more about you changing the things that govern your life. Uh, your sight, your conclusions, your uh, you can take all the same input of information, yet are you powerful? Are you able to go up and possess the land that you're up against? Or are you going to be disempowered and victim and let whatever the circumstances are in your life um, govern your life. And so hopefully we're going to take you t from disempowered, if that's your uh, conclusion, to be empowered. And if you already feel empowered, this is just going to strengthen your belief, strengthen your faith to uh, take the land that God has before you. And so I want to make this statement. If you don't like certain things in your life, then Quit making a space for it to exist in your life. Many of us don't like things. I have things in my life that I don't like. There are some things that I want to stop or things I want to start. And yet um, some of the things that I don't like in my life, I've created a space for it to exist. I've allowed it to come and coexist with me, and I've learned to – plan my life around it. I've planned to um, allow my dysfunctions or my, uh, my lack in that certain area to just coexist with me instead of kicking that thing out of my life. And then when it tries to come back and live with me and to uh, govern my life, uh, instead of making space for it to cram into my life, uh, we need to kick that thing out. We need to kick that thing out of our lives. And so if you don't like certain things in your life, quit making space for it to uh, exist in your life. What have you pushed out of your space? If you have something that's bugging you, uh, many times there's things that bug us or irritate us or frustrate us. Um, and yet we haven't pushed it out of our space. We just let allow it to coexist with us. And so here's something that I've observed in my life and other people's lives is that we usually maintain immaturity at the level we do not want to go past. <laughs> We're just going to jump right into this, okay? We're just going to jump right into it. So we maintain immaturity at the level we do not want to go past. And so uh, 
we come up to resistance in our life. We come up to a certain level. We're to grow. We're to mature. We're to uh, uh, have more responsibility. We're to be more empowered in certain areas of our life. And yet, uh, if it gets too uncomfortable, a lot of times our immaturity and irresponsibility, uh, we maintain that to stay at a certain level of income, a certain level of responsibility, a certain area of ministry. And so um, a lot of times it's us. We won't allow ourselves to mature into the responsibility of our next season. And so um, there's some maturity that has to go on. There's some uh, growing up, if you will, into certain areas. It, and growing up is never comfortable. That's why they call it growing pains. It, it sometimes hurts to grow. It sometimes hurts to uh, keep your word. It sometimes hurts to uh, go ahead and do something that you've committed to uh, when something else more fun comes up or easier in life comes up. But I want us to look at some things in our lives because I think we can mature uh, very rapidly into some areas into this next season that will be able to not only maintain uh, that next season, that next level, but will grow into even the next season, and it'll be accelerated growth. And so, you know, if if you're not wanting to grow up, if you're not wanting to accept more responsibility, if you're not wanting to live the empowered life, uh, you know, you're probably going to stay at the same level you currently are or maybe even digress. And so I don't know too many people that uh, want that in their life. And so let's look at some things in the Bible uh, of what happens. And so one of the biggest ruts uh, we can, one of the biggest ruts we can dig ourselves into is when uh, <laughs> you argue against the fruit in your life that your life keeps revealing. Uh, so you have fruit that keeps revealing itself in your life, and we keep arguing against it. It's not really there. That's not really what you're seeing. That's not really what's going on. Uh, I'm saying this, I want this, I desire this, but the fruit in my life is actually revealing where I'm really at, where I'm really staying, where I am, uh, where my maturity level is. And so if you keep stepping into the same hole and are, uh, a lot of times in our life, we keep, we keep stepping into the same hole and trying to convince ourselves it's a different hole. I was stuck in a, a rut like that for years in a certain area of my life, and I would just keep stepping into the same hole, the same hole, round and round the mountain I would go, round and round the same cycle, the same season, the same times of the year. It would just – I would keep stepping into the same hole and uh, keep trying to convince myself, oh, no, this is a different – this is an attack, when a lot of times – you know, a lot of times the attack of the devil is not an attack of the devil. It's just a, it's just a fruit uh, ripening in your season, in your life, that um, we refuse to look at. And so there is, um, there really is never a reason for an old rut. You know, and hopefully. Uh, when the ruts of your life are revealed, we just won't pretend like that's what you're called to, that that's what your gifting is, or I'm not gifted that way, or I'm not, uh, I guess, meant to be at a certain level or a different season in my life. I guess this is just my lot in life. A lot of times excuses, and we're going to look at excuses here in just a minute if I get to it today. Um, a lot of times our excuses are, are self-imposed boundaries that we place on ourselves so that we don't have to grow up. So the sooner you quit acting like 
uh, your fruit doesn't say what it's saying about your life, the sooner you'll mature into the next season of life. <laughs> so as long as we pretend that the fruit in our life is not revealing or not saying what it really is revealing, and we tend to overlook it or we tend to try to cover it up or we repress it or we try to work harder or we try to distract um, we get busy over here doing something good so that you'll look at that and not look at what the fruit in your life is really producing. Um, the sooner you look at that, the sooner, sooner you look at the fruit in your life, the sooner you get out of your rut. And so when you look at your life, what, what patterns do you see? Um, you know, there's certain things that I'm involved in, in um, that are uncomfortable for me, and a lot of times I will avoid that uncomfortableness. I will avoid the situation. I will avoid um, dealing with that situation or even just if it's a project, just doing it and getting it out of the way if it's something I don't really want to do. But what kind of patterns do you see in your life that, um, that are revealing fruit in your life that's keeping you at a certain level? So um, your patterns don't have to have anything to do with people or circumstances, only you. <laughs> I'm going to see if these numbers are dropping down. I'm I'm watching I'm watching those numbers. Don't you turn that off now? <laughs> but um, this situation that we're currently in, it's it's interesting that we go we've uh, I've seen as a nation and even locally we've gone from a mindset of fear and uncertainty to uh, fear and frustration or anger and frustration, anger and frustration. Now we want to um, move, either move it along or not move it along. And now uh, the dividing lines are being set to uh, if you're going to open up your business or not open your business. Uh, if we're ready to open a business or not ready to open the business. And um, so, I mean, the devil always tries to push us to extremes. And so the pattern that you see in your life have nothing to do with the people or the circumstances around you. It has to do with you. <laughs> and so we are no longer victims of our circumstances. We're not victims of our circumstances. We don't just have to lay there and just let the circumstances happen to us. We don't have to just sit here and allow this thing to happen to us and uh, bunker down mentally and just hope that it goes over us, goes around us, leaves us alone, or doesn't see us. And so um, a lot of times when there's a, a defect, um, when there's a defect going on either in your mindset or um, a pattern in your life, uh, the only way it is allowed to re a, a negative pattern is allowed to repeat itself is if there is a defect. You know, if if my vehicle sometimes you'll see if a vehicle has a defect in it and it's the manufacturer's fault, they do a recall and you go in and the manufacturer will, will fix it at their cost and they'll make sure it's right because uh, they don't want to get sued. But <laughs> um, but if there is a defect in – if there's a negative pattern going on in your life, it's usually because there's a defect or something missing in your life that you've, you've learned to survive, you learn to, to maintain. And so if abuse, if disappointment, if mistakes have created a defect, you may need to be recalled. You may need to be recalled, but Jesus is anointed to heal the brokenhearted. He's anointed to heal broken souls and broken mindsets, 
and he's able to restore and recover everything that has happened to you. He's able to restore that and make everything right. You know, God doesn't make defects. God doesn't make defects. God did not make you with defects. He just didn't. And um, so if there's defects in your mindset, if there's defects in your physical body, uh, God did not that way. Um, he can heal all these things. So let's look Let's look back in, in Numbers 13. Um, Numbers 13. Uh, verse 33, the very last verse we're looking at. It says, There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in the, their sight. And so I believe really for the next, let's just say the rest of the year, uh, I believe we really need to grab the reins of our life. You grab the reins of your life. Do not wait for someone else to grab the reins for you. If your life is out of control, if a mindset is out of control, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel uncertain, if this uh, quarantine has really affected you, uh, I believe we need to grab the reins of our life for the rest of the year, just really a concentrated focus. A focused faith, and if if you're going into the next season in life that is unfolding before us, then we just really have to step it up a notch, maybe two notches. We just have to really go for some stuff, you know. Um, so, if what you are, if what you're currently looking at ahead of you doesn't intimidate you just a little bit you're thinking too small you're believing too small if you're just believing what you can do if you're just looking at something that you can get accomplished without god without uh and just in your own skill set without the help of others you're thinking way too small we have to expand our thinking we have to expand our believing we have to expand our faith we have to stretch our faith and begin to mature into an empowered believer and to uh, accept more responsibility for what is happening in our life, what we're allowing to happen in our life, and what we're making happen in our life with the help of the Holy Spirit. We have been empowered by the Spirit of God. We have been co-missioned by the Lord himself to go into all the world. We've been forced to go outside of these four walls, but we've also been forced into a smaller arena of our home's four walls to stay in there. But I believe during that time, we can take this time to uh, expand our believing, and it's going to be more of a um, like a slingshot effect where they've pulled you back and stretched you and increase the tension, and when it's released, it's going to go further, you're going to go further, you're going to go the distance, you're going to have more power, there's going to be more energy to propel you forward, and I just believe that like a slingshot, we're getting shot into this next season, not as a victim of our past, not as a victim of the last seven weeks, we haven't incorporated new fears into our life, but we've strengthened ourselves, we've emboldened ourselves with faith. We've taken the word of God. We've taken some time out of our busy lives and, and just gone after the presence of God. We've maintained, we've we've hosted, we've we've gathered in the presence of God and just pursued the presence of God. That's what we're going after here. And so um we're not coming out of this thing um uh gun shy, if you will. We're not coming out of this thing like uh an abused spiritual child of God, we're coming out of this thing empowered, emboldened, more bold in our faith, more bold in our demonstration, more bold in what we see. We've been over into the promised land. We've spied out the land. Yeah, there's giants there, 
but there's never ever any mention of giants in the land once they get over there. I don't know where they went. I, I haven't studied that deep yet. I don't know where they went, but they they didn't they weren't met with giants. Uh, they must have they must have just left or disappeared or whatever. But many times that's what giants do. When you decide to go into your promised land, the things that intimidated you, the things that tried to keep you out of your promised land, you know, and you know giants don't live in the wilderness. Giants don't live in the wilderness. There's nothing. They live in the good. They live in the good places. They're trying to keep you out of it. They, they're trying to keep the secret of man. This is where it's. This is where it's happening. Over here, they don't hang out in the wilderness. They hang out in the promised land. And so, but when you show up, when you show up in your promised land, they disappear. They go and see if they can intimidate someone else. And so, selective nearsighted sight says i'm going to pretend that i don't see the dysfunctions in my life and if i don't act like they're there i'm going to maintain it at a level of immaturity that says i can't get involved i don't know how to do that i'll never learn how to do that i'm too old i'm too young i'm a woman i'm a man i'm married i'm single i've had loss i've had gains i mean you see how this works uh, the devil wants to make whatever season in life you are, he wants to disqualify you from going into your promised land or into your next season because he thinks wherever you're at, he tries to convince you wherever you're at currently that that's a dysfunction, that that is insignificant, that that's a disqualifier for you to go into your promised land. And so you are going to complete your assignment. I'm going to complete the assignment on my life. We're not going to quit. We're not going to cower down because we have a right to enjoy the fruits of the promised land, not the manna of the wilderness, not just the manna tasteless. Uh, it was, uh, you know, can imagine eating the same thing without taste uh, for years. I'm sure they got tired of it. Uh, in fact, I know they got tired of it, but. The things that we are going to possess is um, not because the enemy has agreed to let us have it. <laughs> we are not waiting for approval. We're not waiting for the relief from the enemy to give us back what he's stolen from us. We're not waiting for his agreement to give it back to us. He has to give it back to us. In fact, he has to run in fear away from the promises of God that he's been holding hostage or holding and hindering from you, when we step into our promised land, and we're stepping into it, we've been stepping into it for years, but as we march forward, as we go on ahead into this next season of our life, I'm not waiting for the enemy to agree to give it to me. This isn't a tug of war. You let go first. No, I'll let go first. No. No. You let go right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and he doesn't – I'm not waiting for him to agree. I'm taking it from him. I'm taking it from him. And so uh, we're not waiting. We're not just going to sit here and wait till all the giants die out, till the conditions are perfect, till the circumstances are just right. You know, they call that the Goldilocks syndrome where you go into a place and it's, uh, you know, it's too cold, it's too hot, and then it's just right you know she went in there and just tasted the soup it was too cold so she didn't eat that it was too hot she didn't eat that and then it was just right she was waiting for the circumstances to be just right we're not we're not looking at the extremes we're not waiting for the circumstances to be just right we're going forth god's told us to go he told the body of christ to come on rise up arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon us I mean, we're not the only church in town that's rising up. I, I get that, but I'm going to make sure we're doing our part. I'm going to make sure we're doing our part because if every part does its part, if every member of the body of Christ does its part, it causes growth, causes growth. And we come out of this thing equipped, powerful. We're not shrinking back. We're not afraid of confrontation. This is where I'm going. We're staying in our lane. We're not changing the subject. 
We're not changing the story. We're not uh, rearranging things to accommodate or make space for um, the enemy to come in and tell us how to live life, live a powerful, empowered life. Come on. We, we're believers. We're believers. Um, so let me ask you this. I've asked myself this here lately. Um, what areas am I sitting around waiting for God to do certain things that are really mine to do? What areas in your life are you just sitting around waiting for God to do some things that are really yours to do? Um, he has empowered us. He has empowered us to, to rise up, to walk into the promised land. They came to the wrong conclusion. They said we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. That's a fact. And here's where the wrong conclusion came. And so we were in their sight. Now, what did they do? Sit down with them and say, what do you think about me? Can you give me some feedback? <laughs> How do we look to you? Well, you look like grasshoppers. That's what we were thinking. No, you never consult the enemy for feedback. You never consult the enemy for feedback. You never consult the enemy for critique. I never ask the devil, how do you think we're doing as a church? How do you think we're doing as a minister? How do you think we're doing as a husband? How do you think we're, I'm doing as a, as a dad? I never ask the devil what he thinks. Who cares what he thinks? I ask my heavenly father what he thinks. He gives me feedback. He, he corrects me. I am correctable. I am teachable. I am bendable. I am not emboldened against my heavenly father, and I know you aren't either. And so let him correct you. Let him mold you. Let him bend you. Let him, let him speak to you about the areas of your life that maybe you've been waiting on God to do something, to open up some door. Sometimes, like I spoke last week, sometimes you have to kick the door in. Sometimes you have to kick the door in. Don't ever let an open door be a determining factor for the will of God for your life. And don't let a closed door be the determining factor of uh, the will of God for your life. The devil can shut doors. The devil can open doors. God can shut doors. God can open doors as well. He didn't say those that are the sons and daughters of God, they shall be led around by open doors and closed doors. No, he said you be led around by the Spirit of God those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, you know? And so I endeavor to be led by the Spirit of God. Some things look really good, and just something in my gut just says, nope, nope. It's not that it's not a good idea. It's not that it would uh, not help people. It's just I'm not getting involved in it. And so... And sometimes I want to do something, and there's a closed door. There's a hindrance. There's uh, something that says no to me, rejects me, uh, and I know I'm supposed to go through that door. I know my promise, my the other side of that closed door. I will knock on that door. If the door is not opened, I will uh, get some help, and we're going to kick that door down. <laughs> We're going to kick that door down, and we are going to enter into our promised land if necessary, if that's what it takes. And so, um, you know, some people say, and I'm going to wrap it up with this for this week. Uh, some people would say that, um, you know, I don't want to miss God, and I get that. And that's, that, you know, that's a good heart. That's, that's right. Nobody sets out, you know what, let's go out and let's just go miss God. Um, I get that. Yet, many people have used that as an excuse uh, into paralysis. And so because they don't want to miss God and they want the perfect condition and they want everything to line up and they want to have all confidence and all boldness and all grace to abound toward them before and they want everything just to be just right, 
uh, they don't do anything because that rarely happens. It rarely happens before you step out that everything is just perfect for you to step into and not need any resistance at all and not need anything added to you as you go along. But I say we just, I say we arise, I say we get up, I say we get into our promised land, I say we uh, are well able to overcome anything that comes against us, 